In this video, we will be demonstrating the turbojet trainer with reheat, the GT100 RS from Tech Equipment. This is used to teach students how a turbojet on a fighter plane works in a safe, managed way, allowing the students and academics to collect real-time data and calculate important readings, such as airflow and efficiencies. This product is part of the engine's range that covers internal combustion engine sets and gas turbines. The turbojet trainer is a self-contained single-shaft gas turbine thrust jet with the option of a reheat afterburner section for in-depth examination of a working gas turbine. It is typically used by academics and students that specialise in military aircraft. This particular unit is headed for Tunisia once I've done with demonstrating its capabilities to you today. Let's examine the turbojet trainer with reheat in more detail. Here is the gas turbine that is normally housed behind a safety guard and below this is a combustion chamber. This large area is the air box and next to it is the fuel tank. At the very bottom is the oil and fuel pumps and the oil tank here. Above the main mechanical section is a control panel. The main control panel shows a mimic diagram of the whole system including the air box, the compressor, the combustion chamber, the turbine, the reheat section and the nozzle. Connectors to that are the main controls that help users see the status of the support systems here. Above this, around the mimic diagram, are LCD displays that show pressure, turbine speed, thrust, fuel mass flow, temperature and nozzle area. These allow students to calculate variables such as the air inlet flow manually or use the data acquisition system to automatically calculate this. In real-world gas turbines, the generator is often the main part. It includes the compressor, combustion chamber and turbine. The generator here makes a stream of hot gas which provides direct propulsion along the jet pipe. This is the combustion chamber where it receives air from the compressor. This air, mixed with a fuel vapour, enters the chamber through a vaporising nozzle. Then, when you press the ignition button on the control panel, a spark igniter creates the first ignition and the combustion then keeps itself burning until the user stops the fuel supply. There are two temperature sensors and displays in the output of the combustion chamber, the T3A and the T3B, which you can see here. The chamber itself has holes for a swirling flow for stable combustion, then three dilution stages to reduce the temperature of combustion. The complete assembly of the turbine compressor and reheat section, the jet pipe assembly, mounts on flexible supports that allow a small amount of thrust reaction movement against a load cell. We're talking about two millimeters here. This load cell works with a display on the control panel to indicate thrust at the outlet as a unit of force. And this here is a vainless centrifugal turbine. On to the reheat and nozzle section. Engineers add reheat and afterburners to turbojets to raise the exhaust temperature, which raises the velocity and most usefully increases the thrust. In practice, afterburners can double the thrust of a turbojet, but the downside is the relative doubling of fuel consumption. To cite a famous example, Concorde engines use reheat technology. The reheat section is fed from the main turbine, which leaves this high energy exhaust gas, the jet, and enters the reheat section. Here, more fuel is added, firing it up to another level. In this piece of equipment, we limit the fuel supply to the reheat area to show just a small increase in thrust, allowing us to keep the system temperatures at sensible levels. This jet passes through a variable nozzle that will control the final jet for propulsion. Nozzles for turbojets range from simple convergent nozzles to very complex mechanical aerodynamics devices used on a supersonic military aircraft. The turbojet trainer with reheat that we have here today uses a servo motor to control the opening of a variable convergent type nozzle that controls the exit pressure and therefore the thrust. You can see the nozzle itself has a rectangular cross section with variable upper and lower sections which allow you to adjust the area of the nozzle. The linear sensor you can see positioned here measures the nozzle upper and lower sections. Let me talk now about fuel. 
This product, as with all the others in the gas turbine range, uses kerosene to accurately replicate the real world. The filler has built-in coarse filter that helps prevent large particles entering the fuel system. On a related topic, let me talk to you about the oil system, which both lubricates and cools the hydrodynamic bearings of the gas generator. The pump used works with a pressure relief valve here to deliver a sensibly constant oil pressure. The filter in the filler point prevents the system getting blocked by dirt and debris. For safety, various guards are fixed round the mechanics of the equipment, but are not fitted today, allowing you to see all the internal components. Within the equipment is a programmable logic controller that forms the central control of safety interlocks. You cannot start the turbine until five main conditions are met. These are shown here on the control panel. There are multiple mechanisms in place to force a system shutdown if all the safety requirements are not met. The GT100RS has a sister product, the Turbojet Trainer. This doesn't feature the reheat section that we've shown you today, but it's a useful experiment for when illustrating reheat if not required. Within the range is the GT185, a two-shaft gas turbine for further experimentation. For more information about these products, click on the links below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Tech Equipment YouTube channel, like and click on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.